And I would like to help people unlearn some of that stigma today by just leading you through some very basic poses because I realized after all these years, I had been doing yoga wrong. When I took that teacher training, I realized how many stretches. I was just trying to push my flexibility. I was trying to be the bendiest bitch in the room. But in reality, these poses are not about seeing how far you can go. They're about seeing how strong you can keep yourself in the pose. So if you're just like leaning into the pose and completely just leaning and doing nothing else, you're not actually getting an exercise at all. All you're doing is using your bones to prop you up. Now, if you like strengthen your core and then do the lean, you'll actually get an insane workout. And the people who tend to have a bad experience in yoga or even injure themselves are the people who don't understand this. So I'd like to show, not tell. So if you'd like, follow me to the yoga mat. We're gonna come and we're just going to fold forward gently. I used to do this stretch wrong and it was exhausting. But when I started doing it right, it became a lot easier. So I'm gonna show you. What I used to do was this. Nope, I can't even do it. I used to force myself to have a straight leg while I bent, but then I would take all the strain of it in my upper back and I would have to tense my back in order to touch the floor with my legs straight. I learned that I have such tight hamstrings that I need to bend my knees in order to get in alignment in the sword fold. If you're in alignment and you're not tensing the upper back, you're completely relaxing the shoulders and you just dangle there, it's actually an amazing stretch and it's one we don't get enough. And then we're gonna come down onto our knees into child's pose. Child's pose is a great beginner's yoga stretch because we don't want to do yoga to exhaust ourselves. Like most people do yoga once and then it's like a whole room of bendy bitches who are better and more athletic than you and then you feel terrible afterwards. But the reality is that you just wanna go at your own pace. So we're gonna go at our own pace and we're just gonna sit down. We're gonna bring it around town. Bring it around town. Then you switch. Uh, I switch. And you're gonna do this. And switch. And this. And that. And this. And that. And then. Hinge from the low back and hips. Don't tense the upper back. Relax the shoulders and just fold forward. Your low back should be getting a good stretch here. Your upper body should be completely relaxed. Take a few delicious breaths. Inhale. We're gonna do alternate nostril breathing. Inhale, left nostril. Hold. Exhale, right. Inhale, right. Hold. Exhale, left. Inhale left, hold, and then when you're ready, hold as long as you can, and then release through both nostrils. You can do that as long or as short as you want. All that's important is that you get yourself in alignment. Now we're gonna come back into cat-cow. This is cat. You tuck the tailbone, relax the upper body, Go all the way back, and then as you inhale, come up into cow. Uh, in cow, your butt should be out, your upper body flexed, your back flexed, and then exhale into cat. I'm gonna rock in this position for a second. You know what we're doing is gentle yoga. Because if you don't do yoga 
and you do a full yoga flow, you're gonna be exhausted. And we don't want that, do we, girls? We just wanna have a good time. We wanna stretch out our ligaments. Use your breath as you inhale into cow. Relax as you exhale into cat. And you're gonna wiggle again. Make sure you're relaxing at the shoulders. Sometimes we carry all the tension of these stretches in our shoulders. And then we walk out of it feeling worse than we did before. And then you're going to inhale and then exhale. Walk your arms to the left and look over the left shoulder. Try to be elastic as you do this. Relax the shoulders. One more delicious breath. Exhale, stretch. Inhale back center, and we're gonna do the other side. Exhale. One more. And then we're gonna come back center, and we're gonna slowly come up into downward dog. Many yoga flows use this stretch a lot, and for an untrained yoga beginner, that is incredibly exhausting. So we're gonna take it at our own pace. Inhale into it. I cannot do a proper downward dog without bending my legs because of how tight my low body and hamstring is. My scoliosis and the trauma the area has endured has slowed progress on it, but I'm able to keep my low back hinging, and that's what's important. And I make a little progress on my hamstrings every day. We're gonna then gonna step the right foot forward, then the left. And we're just gonna dangle like a rag doll. Move our head, yes, no. Roll it around, reverse. And then we're gonna shake like a rag doll. If your shoulders are, if your feet are shoulder width apart, parallel, and you're hinging from the hips, you should have no problems keeping balance. If you are trouble, if you're having trouble keeping balance, it's because you're out of alignment. And then we're gonna slowly fold up. Uh, inhale, arms above the head. And exhale. And now, we're going to inhale above the head again, fold back down, and just lay here a little longer. And then when you're ready, you're gonna come down onto your knees. Oh. You're gonna bring it around town. Bring it around town. And then switch. Exhale forward. And then we're going to come onto our back for happy baby pose. It was my favorite yoga pose. Because it massages the low back. And if you sit all day, this is the part of your back that you tense. And I'm trying to undo that. Oh, few more. And then we're gonna go on our back into the wind removing pose. Hold your right knee, pull it with your biceps. Gently stretch. Exhale for flexibility. Inhale, back up. Exhale. One more as far as you can. And then we're going to turn over. Put both shoulders on the ground, outstretch the right arm, look over at it. Make sure your back is not taking the stress here. I can put my right knee on the ground here, but I wouldn't be in alignment and my back would be getting the stretch. And it's supposed to, but not the strain. Use your breath, exhale a little deeper into it. Just relax, let gravity do all the work. 
Make sure your back isn't straining. Relax the shoulders. Take a deep breath here. And then inhale back up. We're gonna do the other side. Whenever you stretch one leg, you must do the other. Otherwise, you'll be out of alignment. Pull it gently with your biceps. Make sure your shoulders aren't getting this. Mm. Few. This is my much tighter side, if you can't tell. And that's okay. The body is not perfect symmetry. One more deep breath. Go as far as you can. And then we're going to go to the other side. Roll to the right. Outstretch the left arm. Look over at it. Keep both shoulders on the ground. Shoulders relaxed. Neck relaxed. And slowly ease into this with each exhale. I can put my foot, my knee on the ground. And I used to. Be, I used to go all the way down thinking, well, I'm, I'm flexible. I can do this. But I was putting strain on my low back and I didn't even know it. So make sure you're not pushing yourself beyond a reasonable means because yoga is not a competition. If you don't go as far as me, or if you go farther, nobody wins, nobody loses. And something that yoga teachers don't always remind people of is if the yoga flow is going too fast for you, or too deep, or you're just tired, modify. You can modify your own session. If you don't keep up, that's nothing to be embarrassed about. I know so many trans women, specifically, who are too embarrassed to go to a yoga class because they're not very flexible. And to that I say, don't judge yourself. It's okay to not be flexible. I'm actually not flexible. And my mom isn't either. We have a very tight hamstring and it's hard for us to extend our legs completely. But we still practice yoga because our bodies need it. I do not think that I would have the happy happiness and balance that I have now if I wasn't practicing yoga, at least when I can. One more. And then we're going to come back into happy baby. We're going to do one more low back stretch. Inhale up. This is another stretch that is really hard for me because of my tight hamstrings. You're supposed to stretch the legs and then bend. But the problem is, you see this? You see this crook in my back? All the bending is happening on my upper and mid back, and that's not what's supposed to happen. My low back is supposed to be able to bend, but I can't do it with my legs stretched. So what I do is I modify. I lean and hinge. Look at that. Look at the difference in the way my back moves. This is the way your back is supposed to bend forward. A few deep breaths. And then grab onto your toes and let gravity do the rest of the work. Remember to relax the upper back. Completely surrender yourself to Mother Earth. Yoga is just letting gravity give you a big hug. And if you do it right, it should feel good. If I was to tense my upper back here, it would feel awful. But it feels really good. And then, when you're ready, you're going to come back down. Do one more round of happy baby. Anytime you stretch out your low back, this is a great stretch to... Massage your low back. Make sure you're tucking the tailbone in. Uh, and when you're ready, you're going to come down into Shavasana. Shavasana is the most important of all the yoga poses. You need to nourish your body. Allow it to recharge. We did a very gentle 
introduction to yoga session today, and that's okay, because the only way you'll do this is if you do it every day. Nobody is able to just do yoga once. Well, that's not true. Plenty of people do whatever they want. But I was never able to get into yoga until I got into doing it every day. And a little bit often is a lot more profoundly impactful than a lot not as often, you know? Don't try to overcompensate for a lifetime of not doing yoga. Just let yourself be and do what you can when you can. As you inhale, keep track of the breath and try to slow it. <sighs> Slowly start to wiggle your toes, wiggle your fingers. Regain a little bit of movement with each second that passes. Maybe move your elbows, stretch your arms up. Maybe roll to your side. Mm, roll out your neck. And slowly make your way to a seated position. Mm, bring it around town once. Oh, and reverse. Roll out your neck. Thank yourself for doing yoga today. Maybe you'll do it every day. Mm -hmm. Namaste. I hope you enjoyed that. This is an experimental video. Some people ask for it, and if you want to see more of it, make sure to comment, like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. I would really like to spread the word, and honestly, I really would hope to see other trans women get into yoga because we can reclaim it. You know, it's such a it's such a beautiful way to take care of your body, and I would like to see more of my trans friends that I know take better care of their body because it's it's hard. It's really hard. So. Be healthy, be happy, and have a great one. Hi everyone, today we're going to be doing a long requested video. I'm going to get you in on the basics of yoga. I have talked about this before, but not as in depth as I'd like, but today I really want to talk about how important yoga was for me in my transition as well as in my life. Um, so if you're interested in hearing about how yoga changed my life, uh, keep watching. So oh, it's no surprise that when I started my transition, and generally my whole life, I was very, very thi thin, and I was amidst an eating disorder, and I wasn't really exercising at all. I was simply just starving myself to achieve that. And so I also talked about this. I had a journey with overcoming my eating disorder over the course of my transition because I realized that if I wanted to have the, like, the results that I wanted with my transition, I was going to have to stop starving myself. Estrogen binds to the fat receptacles in your body, you know? And I didn't know that at first, and I realized now, looking back, that I was impeding my ability to fully process and heal because of my eating disorder. So when I did have to eventually confront that, I also had to confront the reality that I did not exercise. I did not get out much, I didn't get my blood pumping, and that can have a profound impact on your mental health. I was at the peak of my depression, no coincidence, when I was doing nothing and just letting my muscles atrophy. I was deliberately letting my upper body atrophy because I didn't want to have biceps. And looking back, I wish I could have told myself moderation, you know, because there's nothing healthy about letting that happen. But anyway, all I'm trying to say is today we're going to talk about how I was able to take care of my body and in doing so improve my mental health. Most of you won't know this, but I'm actually a certified yoga teacher. My uh, mom had me take a training when I was younger and I was really into it, but I just ended up not pursuing it for whatever reason. Um, but it really did come into my life at a really powerful time because after my SRS, 
I had a lot of complications and I had a really long healing process and I gotta say I don't think I would be the person I am today had I not started doing yoga then because I needed to heal and I needed to relax and I needed to learn to unlearn all the tension you know um, especially like a depressed person like myself I carried a lot of tension I carried it in my jaw in my low low back and in my in my legs and my hamstrings still are so incredibly tight but the point is is that I had to learn how to unlearn all that tension and most people th think of yoga and they have a very different idea of what it is because yoga is kind of its own thing in pop culture like there are people in LA who make it their whole personality and I'm honestly one of those people and I know it's really annoying because there's no way to endear somebody while kind of looking like uh, an obsessed hippie. I'm not saying that that's a bad thing, but I am saying that people tend to take me less seriously when I try to go on and on about yoga and it's because I think there's a stigma.